Okay, welcome back to another episode. Today we are going to be talking uh, a little bit of a continuation of the OpenAI. Uh, last week we talked about OpenAI architecture patterns and how you could actually use some of these uh, repos that I had highlighted in my GitHub repo so you could actually learn how to chat with your own data using some of the deployable application samples. Today we are going to do a no-code solution which uh, through the Azure OpenAI Studio. Uh, last week what we talked about the basic architecture that we went through last week was the idea that you have a user app, you have an app server that will hit cognitive search and then take the results of cognitive search like a query on your own data or your own PDF files, pass that to OpenAI for a summary and then you get the summary back to the user. So we're going to talk some more about something similar to that architecture pattern that doesn't require any code. So what we're going to start with today is this assumes that you already have an Azure OpenAI uh, enabled in your subscription. If you don't, that is on the repo. You can go here to the repo and register for access to OpenAI. This will get you access to GPT 3.5, which will be good enough to get through this demo. Once you've got access to this, you can request access to GPT 4, but make sure you keep the, uh, there's a key they give you, a little number they give you, make sure you keep that because you're going to need it for GPT 4 also. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, we've actually got in my, uh, I've got a resource group created already, so I'll let you uh, solve how to or get this part solved on your own. Uh, all you need in this resource group is Azure OpenAI, uh, and name it whatever you want. And you also need a cognitive services search service. So make sure you have that in a resource group, and then we'll pick up uh, from there. Okay, so hopefully you've had time to get your, uh, pause the video if you didn't, but go ahead and get your OpenAI account, uh, uh, Marketplace account created inside your resource group and get your cognitive search service in there as well. So what we're going to do now is jump into the cognitive services uh, service uh, and we're going to jump down to model deployments. And you'll see that when you get down here, the first thing you're going to see is manage deployments. So we're going to drill into that and you'll notice that it's going to open a new pane of glass for us, which is going to open something uh, outside of Azure portal. Uh, and you'll notice that deployments currently we have nothing that's blank. So even if we try and go to chat, the first thing it's going to tell us is it doesn't find any deployments. Now what it's talking about is there is no model out here. So we have to go ahead and create one model and you can use any of the uh, DaVinci 3 if you want. We're going to be using the GPT-35 Turbo 16K for this demo. Uh, what that means is, if you watch the last video, the 16K is going to give us access to 16,000 tokens. Uh, so instead of requesting 2,000 tokens or being limited or throttled by 2,000 tokens on a request, in this one we can actually go as far as to create up to 16,000 or pass 16,000 tokens in, which is a relatively large document. This happens pretty quickly. You'll notice that when it creates, it creates almost instantly. We'll see now that we have a deployment out here. So we're going to go to this home page up here where it says Azure OpenAI, and this is a good place to get started. Uh, you can play around with the chat playground, the completions playground, Dolly, if you want to mess with that. Uh, but what we're interested in today is bring your own data. And what that's going to do is when we come to bring your own data, you'll notice it's going to take us to the chat section of the Azure uh, AI Studio. So we're going to start out by selecting a data source. Uh, we're going to be using Azure Blob Storage. Uh, it's going to be in my subscription. And I'm going to come down and pull up SQL Ship Blob. And we're going to go to the storage container HR Docs. And then we are going to go and choose this uh, resource that we actually created before. So it's going to find the cognitive services resources that I have created in my account. And you'll see that I have three out there, but this is the one that I actually created inside my resource group. And we're going to give it a nice little name, HR Docs uh, Index, because it is going to be a cognitive services index. And acknowledge that this may actually incur some cost. Uh, so then we'll go from here, go to Next, uh, Review and Finish. We'll see that we have all the information here, Blob Storage, my resource name, uh, the container, the cognitive service that I want to use in the HR docs. We're going to do a save and close. Now what's going to happen is it's going to take the contents of that folder and let me show you what's in that folder. We looked at this last week because one of the uh, demos that we did last week was using um, a data set that's actually in the Azure Search OpenAI demo under data. We have some PDF files out here and I had actually, um, ahead of the video, I had downloaded these and put them in my Blob Storage account. So we have uh, a make-believe company out here called Contoso Electronics. And Contoso Electronics, we actually have the benefits options, uh, Northwind Health and Northwind Standard, which is our insurance company, Perks Plus, which is the Contoso Perks Plus, the employee handbook for 
uh, Contoso and the role library. So all the jobs that are available at Contoso as well. So this is the data that it's currently scanning. And this will take about five minutes or so because for this particular data set. Uh, so you can actually, you know, kind of leave it, uh, let it run. And you can see that, you know, it finished live. So we can see that it's already, it's already complete. Now, there's another thing we need to think about. So we've got the index created already, and that was relatively fast. Uh, there's another thing that we need to think about here as far as this playground goes is the chat message. So here it says you are an AI assistant that helps people find information. So what we're probably going to want to do is change this up a little bit so this particular AI assistant knows what its role is when answering questions to a user. So we can set like the default uh, where it's going to ask us, are you sure you want to wipe that out and start over? We're going to say yes. In this case, you'll say default, you're an AI assistant, helps us find information. You could actually do something silly like Shakespeare. So you could have them respond in Shakespearean if you want. Uh, and there's, you know, basically, and this is the prompt engineering that we talk about. So, and I'll show you where that comes in with everyone we ask, or every time we send a request in. So we're going to go with the default. You are, a, uh, you are an AI assistant that helps people find information. And we're going to modify this about Contoso Electronics related to and it's going to take some experimentation don't think that just because i'm typing this in it's going to be the absolute perfect uh, prompt engineering you're going to have to experiment with this on your own to get this you know kind of where you want it to be so it's answering questions correctly uh, related to human resource oops human questions And nice thing about this, even if I were to get that wrong, it would, uh, uh, chat GPT actually does a good job on spell check. So it's pretty forgiving and questions related to, uh, healthcare Northwind, Northwind healthcare. Plans. Um, Should always respond with references if you do not have an answer for a question say so say so or say you do not know that will help prevent hallucinations so in this case we want to save this and play with it so updating the system message will start a new chat session okay that's great uh, so now we've got something out here. You are an AI assistant that helps people find information about Contoso Electronics related to human resource questions and questions related to Northwind Healthcare plans. Uh, you would, uh, should always respond. So there's a couple other out here too. You also maybe asked, and this is kind of where, you know, we could just go in here and say, uh, related Northwind Healthcare plans, comma, uh, perks plus, and what was the other one? Uh, job roles at Contoso. Like I said before, more specifics, the better. So let's save that and see how we did. Like I'm doing, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. And every time I've done this demo, I do it a little bit different every time. But there, I have learned that there are absolute minimums you need to put in there. Uh, so we can, now we're going to go ahead and ask it a question. What is included in the Northwind uh, standard health plan? Because that was one of the documents that we uploaded. So let's see what we get. And this is kind of where you can start playing with it uh, and start seeing how it actually does. So in this case, it actually comes back with some information on the standard health plan. And we'll see that we get four references out here. And you'll see that we get uh, the Northwind Standard Benefits Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and Part 4, which is really great. Uh, so then we can move on and say what is included, what benefits are included in the Contoso. Like I said, be specific in your questions. Electronics, uh, Perks Plus, Plus, Plan. Actually, I just leave it at that. 
It's included in the NULC. I did a spelling error there. Uh, Perks Plus is uh, designed to support the health and wellness of employees. So that's exactly right. It allows employees to expense up to $1,000. So we're having good luck right now, but I've got a pretty thorough system message, uh, which is going to be the uh, what we're passing in as what your role in life is. And I'm also being very specific on the questions that I answer. Now, what I want to show you is uh, this is the JSON that's getting sent and getting passed back. So you'll notice that the role uh, for system is you are an AI assistant that helps people find information about Contoso Electronics. This is the same thing that we had right here, isn't it? So I want you to remember that the system message that you have put in here, this is the prompt engineering so that OpenAI knows every single time that it gets a question that it knows its role in life, so to speak. Uh, and then, you know, we'll see that it actually does come back with that and it comes back. So we can take a look at the JSON and get an idea. So we can say the user, what benefits are included? Uh, and then you can see that the response that it gave back. So, and it gives references to the docs, uh, that were actually out there as well. So, and this is a, a great way to kind of experiment Perks plus PDF part one. So you can actually come down here and I like this reference. Uh, so it's actually, you've got it set up in such a way that you can take a look at the reference uh, while you're playing around with it. So this is awesome. Uh, we talked about this, but the thing I also talked about was we can deploy this with no code. So the way to deploy this with no code is there is an option over here that says deploy to a new web app. So we have our deployment GPT model. We have our system message, our prompt engineering is complete, and we have our documents uploaded into cognitive search. Uh, you can mess around with this if you want, if you want to include past messages because uh, this will increase the token count for every time if you keep that. So every time I send a new uh, question, prior questions and answers could be sent in. It's to some degree to that. So you may want to limit how far back this thing remembers just so you can save on your token count. So maybe set it to like four, for instance, uh, four or five. And here's the thing. There's no perfect answer to what this number should be. Uh, so what I would do is experiment with it and see how it actually does. Uh, I'm probably going to set mine to five. Now we're going to do a deploy to a new web app. So let's see what this looks like. All right, so we're going to create a new web app or you can use an existing web app. Uh, so, but here I want you to notice this the message at the top. Uh, your web app will be configured with Azure Active Directory with authentication enabled. So what that means is nobody that has access, nobody that doesn't have access to your Azure Active Directory subscription will be able to hit that web endpoint. So they'll have to log in and they'll have to have access to that. In my case, I'm running in a Microsoft tenant right now, so everybody that's in my Microsoft tenant actually will have access to my web app. If I open up in incognito mode, it's going to force me to log in using my Microsoft credentials as an example. Uh, HR chat with data. So we're going to call her that, see if the, work, the name works out okay. Uh, the subscription we're going to use, we're going to use mine. I'll, uh, you won't be able to see my subscription name. The resource group that we're going to use is what we did before, which was, I have a lot of resource groups out here. Uh, RG, Azure OpenAI, HR Chat. Location, I want this to be. All my stuff is in East US, so I'm gonna keep it in East US. Pricing plan, I wanna choose. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the standard S1 for right now, and you can change this later. And I acknowledge that web apps will incur. So now we're gonna do a deploy. So what's gonna happen next is when we click the deploy button, we have about a, about a 10 minute wait. Uh, there is another wait on the other side of that you need to think about because once you get the app deployed, it still takes a few more minutes even after the app is online for it to set up the Azure Active Directory permissions so I can get access to it. So I'm going to pause the video on my side and I'll be back in a hot second and we'll uh, show you what this looks like when it's been deployed. Okay, so it has been about 10 minutes. Uh, it's given me time. I now have a new button out here. This is Launch Web App. Uh, so if we actually go and do that, what we'll see is that we now have something where we can start chatting. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, we had talked about, is if I told you that we couldn't access this if I were in incognito without logging in. So if I go to my HR chat with your data uh, website, you'll see the first thing it's going to ask me is for me to sign in. So that kind of indicates that there are some permissions on this. In this case, they're related to Active Directory. It just so happens that I share my tenant with lots of other employees at Microsoft, so any of them will be able to access my tenant, but you won't uh, as a point. Uh, let's see if I have anything in the buffer. Uh, note. That was my website, which will be gone by the time you see it. But let's go back to one of our original questions. We'll just copy one and see how we do here. I like that Perks Plus question because it's fun. And I have had some hallucinations with this. So I think I'm finally figuring out. 
uh, the right question and the right prompt engineering to get it right every time. Uh, so I like this because now it gives me a list. So the, like, the thing I like about this is the temperature is set kind of medium, which means that it has some uh, flexibility in how it responds every time. So you could ask this question four or five times and get a different response. It's the correct response, but it'll be a variation on the last response. But you can see here that this time it actually gave me a list of items that I can actually work with. Uh, what roles, let's do a new question, are there at Contoso Electronics? see how we do on this one see if we can get the role library back uh, so we got uh, looks like we got almost in fact that is all the jobs that are out there if we go look at the uh, reference book here we'll see that there are 30 in the employee handbook 30 different jobs that are available so it actually hit the role library and came back with all the answers of that question so then we can actually dive into those because we have the data here uh, that was uploaded in the PDFs as well what does a uh, senior manager of marketing do. And we'll see if we can't drill in because we do have that data out there also. Uh, in the uh, role library, we actually have a definition for what all these jobs are. And we can see that if we look, we'll actually get access to the role library and it will tell us what the uh, senior manager of operations actually does. So senior manager of marketing, let's see if we get the right page. We got several back. Resources, uh, senior manager of operations, uh, Role descriptions. Okay, so it was this one, but it chopped off, I think, the t title of it. But this is the answer to the question. Develop and implement marketing strategies. So, so that's good. We got back some good information on that. So this is the no code. This is ready to go. You can turn this over to your users. Uh, and you now have a fully functional, in this case, I have a fully functional web app that is uh, capable of chatting with my data. Uh, so, and I'll make sure that this link that I had given you before, uh, where my, this GitHub repo, I'll make sure that this is actually in the comment section of the YouTube video. So you can get to that if you need to get to some of these links. Otherwise you can use this video to follow along and actually start chatting with your own data without having to worry about doing any development. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video.